First, I'll cover off a brief overview of who we are and what issues today's networks face, followed by an overview of the solution, the product components, and a number of typical working scenarios for the system. So, who are Sungro? We were established in 1997 by Professor Chow. Our focus is solely on renewable technologies. Headquarters, manufacturing, and R&D are in Hefei, China. Our performance is the result of our continuous investment in innovation. For example, with over 90 million US dollars invested in 2019. We have one of the largest R&D teams in the industry with over 1,200 staff, so far amassing over 2,000 patent applications. We continue to invest in technical innovation. With over 120 gigawatts installed in over 60 regions, we also have presence in other sectors too. For example, energy storage has amassed over 900 applications worldwide. Our floating PV systems has approximately one third of the global market share. Moreover, within China, we have divisions for product development, automotive power electronics, and wind energy converters. So, as our countries rapidly increase deployment of renewable technologies, this can have an adverse effect on the actual grid infrastructure, such as lack of grid capacity, the cost of reinforcement works can be astronomical and potentially render a project dead from the off. Network quality issues, Managing the grid with large amounts of aggregated microgeneration can also present challenges, such as frequency and voltage fluctuation. Then there's the subsidy free situation. What to do once feed-in tariffs or renewable subsidies drop or are withdrawn? How do we navigate the next revenue opportunities? On the graph, we see periods where the system is in standby, potentially due to negative energy prices on the network. So typical applications. Here we have some of the main areas we see DC coupled solutions working. On the left graphic, we see unpredictable power due to fluctuations of the irradiance. For this, we can look at offering ramp rate control, a way of smoothing the power swing or reducing the impact of power changes with a combination of PV yield and stored energy from the batteries. The center graphic illustrates the power curve with larger DC-AC ratios that are being designed due to the lower cost of modules. This is good in winter, but what happens in summer? The inverter is only able to convert a maximum amount of energy. Surplus energy is lost. Clipping recapture will allow you to store this surplus energy for use either before sunrise or after the sun sets. Likewise, with the graphic on the right, curtailment recapture would be used when the network operator limits export. In non-storage scenarios, this would mean either the PV plant switching off or turned down, both leading to yield losses. Like clipping recapture, the plant would carry on as normal, however, diverting the energy to the batteries rather than reducing its output. Again, allowing you to export at the later stage when the network conditions are better. So the main grid benefits of a DC coupled system. So again, I'll highlight a couple of the areas here. If we go from left to right, for the utility applications, resource adequacy has potential to work with the DSOs to balance the network locally. Our solution provides this functionality, allowing you to meet the net load profile. For the network, frequency regulation. As we know, renewable generation is asynchronous, and this is difficult to manage. Having storage coupled to the PV plant allows us to export cleanly into the grid by means of exporting a smoother power curve, for example. And the functions in the plant output control section provides clear benefits to both the local and national networks. So to give a brief comparison of the solution, I've highlighted the main key differences of a DC coupled system against an AC coupled system. And again, to summarize, with the DC coupled system, it allows you to increase the DC-AC ratio of the PV system without fear of loss of yield due to clipping. Greater cost savings can be achieved by reducing the number of MV stations required. This also results in greater system efficiency. 
So what makes up our DC coupled solution? In the picture on the right hand side, we have the new SG3125HV-MV-30 central inverter. This is a turnkey solution with the MV and RMU integrated into the ISO container. I'll cover off the inverter features on the next slide. To the left of the inverter is the SD1250HV DC-DC converter. This is scalable. You can add up to three DC-DC converters per dash 30 central inverter station. These DC-DC converters work with 1C, 0.5C or 0.25C battery ratings. Another feature to note is that you can install the PV inverter first and should the business case or the grid requirements change, you can install the DC-DC converters and batteries at a later stage, as the connectivity is already built into the Dash 30 inverter. <laughs>